So let's start with some basic shoe anatomy. What I'm pointing out here is a heel counter of this particular shoe. Next, I'm indicating where a gel pocket exists. It's sort of tough to see. Um, from a lateral view, or if we spin the shoe sideways, you can see the upper of the shoe. Next, we'll move on to the midsole, which is the white layer. And lastly, the outer sole of the shoe. A simple starting point when it comes to screening for premature wear of your running shoes is to simply determine whether or not they're glued properly. So in this particular case, you can see that there's a pulling away of the outer sole from the midsole. So this is no longer a viable training shoe. So when it comes to assessing for symmetry of the shoe, what you need to do is start by resting the shoe on a level platform inside it from the posterior aspect or the rear view. I have a simple goniometer, which is a measuring stick that gives us angular degrees to truly assess for whether or not this shoe is resting level. So you want to make sure that the heel counter is resting level on the sole or the platform of the shoe. A lot of times what you'll notice is the shoe is either canted inward or outward. In either case, it's problematic. To assess for stability of the shoe, again, you want to place it on a firm level surface and you want to rock it side to side by applying a downward, medial, and lateral force to assess its ability to withstand rocking. If it's unable to withstand rocking, it's not going to be able to support the foot. Next, what we're going to look at is the ability of the upper to withstand side-to-side -side motion, similar to the last assessment, but just moving higher up on the shoe. The last part of this assessment pertains to assessing for shock absorption of the shoe. So in this particular case, I'm trying to compress the medial and lateral aspect of the shoe to really look at the integrity of the gel pocket. This is often an overlooked area and these gel pockets can deflate. 